Greetings and welcome once again to Music and Meditation with Pastor Fred and Sharon Moore. And thank you, Sharon, for that beautiful song, He Touched Me. Yes. Well, today our sermon is Touched by a Child, Touched by a King. Listen to these words from Isaiah 9, King James Version. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Luke 1, 26 through 33. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And then the angel said to her, again, angel said this, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a child, and he shall be called Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give him Give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. No room for them in the end. Is there anything so sweet as the experience of holding a newborn child? Is there anything so overwhelming as feeling that child breathing on your shoulder? Is there anything so life-changing as a child holding your hand for the first time? Hmm. An unknown poet described a child as a sweet blossom of humanity, fresh fallen from God's own home to flower on the earth. Who among us? has not praised God and marveled at his powers when we hold an infant in our arms. Hmm. A tiny hand, so small yet so perfect, it instantly becomes a topic of conversation, doesn't it? No one can resist placing his finger in the clutching hand of an infant. A smile comes to his lips and a certain glow to his eyes. Wordsworth, he put it this way, Our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting. The soul that rises with us, our life star, hath elsewhere in its setting, and cometh from afar. Not an entire forgetfulness, not an entire nakedness, but trailing clouds of glory do we come from God, who is our home. Jesus, he surely set an example for us. In Mark 10, 16, we read, He took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them, the children. Imagine Mary holding the infant, Jesus, remembering in her heart what the angel had said about him, knowing that he was destined to be the Messiah. Hmm. Knowing also that he would face antagonism in the world around him, knowing that he was indeed in her hands, but also in the hands of God. Oh, we have dreams for our children and our grandchildren 
and our great-grandchildren, don't we? But we really don't know what will be with these children, with our children. But Mary knew, and she responded to the angel, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would someday walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy, this child to make you new, this child that you delivered will soon deliver you? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, and dumb will speak the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know? That your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? And that sleeping child that you're holding is really the great I am. The question of those lyrics Mary, did you know it's a, it's a rhetorical one? The scripture affirms that she did indeed know some of these things. The angel told her. But could she have known how it would affect her life? She didn't know. But she said, be it unto me according to thy word. Do we say that? Be it unto me, be it unto me according to thy word. Well, she knew her son was the Christ and that his would be a difficult journey. She didn't know about herself, but she submitted and embarked on that journey. Hmm. We, too, have been touched by this child. Yes, we have. We celebrate his coming to us. We know that he is the Messiah, the Christ, the King of Kings, and we know that we have been touched by this King of Kings. If Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the second person of the Trinity, the Redeemer, he is all of these things, then it is amazing and significant that God chose to send Jesus into the world as an infant. Yes, Jesus was born. Everything that birth is, everything that childhood is, is a part of God's plan of salvation for us. We know this. Just like Mary, we don't know what lies ahead of us, but we say with her, be it with me according to thy word. We can say that collectively and individually because we have been touched by a child. We have been touched by a child, touched by a king. Hmm. So, how do we personalize? How do we understand? How do we experience this being touched by the child, being touched by the king of kings? Well, it's not the same for all of us. No, it isn't. For some, it is indeed a, a powerful moment in time when we ask for forgiveness and appropriate the righteousness of holy God. For others, it's a gradual movement away from darkness and despair toward the light of Christ. For some, it's almost an intellectual Christ. Yes, it was for C.S. Lewis. He said, but all roads lead to this. Acts 16, 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There's nothing here about catechism, about confirmation, about baptism. Well, these are all good things, but it all comes down to this. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Yes. 
We are touched by the beauty, the simplicity, the tenderness of a child. And we are touched by the glory and the power of the King. If you have not been touched by that child, if you have not been touched by that King, if you do not have the assurance of forgiveness and the encouragement of the power and the glory of the King, it can be yours today. You can be touched by the child of Bethlehem. You can be touched by the King of Kings. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray that prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, till we meet again, God be with you and God bless you. Amen.